Hello and welcome back. Eddie Rodosovich, Josh McQuestion, just the two of us as we were uh, down in Dallas on Sunday over at Arlington Martin High School. Uh, welcome back to the SurgeScoop.com YouTube page. We are going to do a little bit of a wrap up, kind of a cleanup, if you will, from everything that was on Sunday at the Under Armour event in Dallas. It's become kind of a little bit of a a mainstay in our spring schedule kind of kicks everything off here at the uh, beginning of March, usually coinciding with uh, the big 12 uh, basketball tournament. Obviously that's coming up this week. Caught up with Bob Prisbillo, uh, the hoops report in uh, anticipation of Oklahoma's opener on Wednesday against TCU in the big 12 tournament. Uh, that will be out for your viewing pleasure here over the next, uh, probably next hour or so next couple hours. It's probably out by the time you watch this. Nonetheless, Josh, a uh, great camp on Sunday. I think that that was a very talented group and a lot of guys that uh, Oklahoma fans, if you're an Oklahoma high school football fan, you're certainly familiar with, but uh, a lot of guys that have Oklahoma offers or certainly are going to be targets for Oklahoma here moving forward. Yeah, Eddie, that we've been to plenty of camps through the years. You know, you and I have done this uh, uh, this kind of tag team events plenty of times. And there's camps where you're looking for, you know, and hoping for four to five guys sure. worth interviewing. You're like, well, okay, that kid's really interesting. And he's young. Maybe we'll see if if OU's talked to him. This was a deal where, you know, it felt kind of like uh, to again to always date myself, Will Ferrell and old school. Like, I don't know if we're gonna have enough time. Like, we there were so many interviews where I think at one point we had done six or seven in a row and it was just basically the offensive line group getting done. Like it, there, there were just so many linemen uh, and, th and there were several kids that I think we would have been happy to interview, but they were, there was so much that they had already done and we had already done. And we needed to get back to watching some of the other position groups. And so we had to make some, you know, some tough choices, but I mean, it, it's indicative of the talent that was there I think we could have if we just if time was no issue, we could have probably done twenty interviews easily oh, sure. on Sunday. No doubt about it. Uh, you know, I I would say if you want to see any of the interviews that Josh conducted on Sunday with a number of guys, uh, just head over to the SoonerScoop.com editorial page. They're all up there, and uh, you know, I I thought it was an excellent camp. Let's start getting into uh, everybody that was there, and I think it's probably pretty hard to uh, not start with Oklahoma 2025 wide receiver commit Elijah Thomas, the Shakota native, uh, takes home the MVP from uh, the camp at the wide receiver position, Josh. And I, I don't know any other way to say it than he was spectacular. He really was. And it was really kind of a growth of what we had already seen uh, from him as a soft, uh, you know, I guess as a junior going into the, uh, the spring last year when his name started to kind of get out there and I had seen some tape of him of him as a sophomore and thought, wow, this guy's really special. But then uh, again, like this catch right here, like you just, every time he is so comfortable catching it at really any angle, like you can see him turn his hands there. He's so strong. Like we mentioned uh, yesterday on the report, like just look how he just plucks the ball here. Like just boom, easy. And like, it, it's never, it's never a double catch. Like, and, and a, as a guy that shook it, shook his hand, Plenty of times. This is a guy with some big hands, big mitts. And, you know, he he's about six foot, six foot one, somewhere in that ballpark. But you can look at him. Look at those long arms. Like, he can make catches that guys his size shouldn't make just because he has both explosion when he goes up in the air to get the ball, but also just the reach. I mean, like, you, again, you can see it there. Like, he just catches the ball at all the different angles so well. And I think that's one of those things that it's easy to overlook. You know, I think people, when they talk about receivers, they talk about speed or, you know, uh, you know, big plays on tape, that kind of stuff. But that little stuff, it makes life so easy for your quarterback because no, almost no matter where you put it, he's got a chance to make a play for you. As far as ceiling for Elijah Thomas, I think that uh, you leave that camp and you see the performance that he put together. He's going to be, uh, you know, the MB he, he was the MVP. He's going to be invited to the uh, the big national event there. It just seems like, what is, how, how good can this guy be? I know that uh, there's a lot of people on the message boards, on the Crimson Quarter. When you saw C.D. Lamb, he, he's a little bit more developed than C.D. was, even at the high school level. He is much more physically developed sure. than CD was. And that's, and that's what I mean. That's what I mean. I, I, you know, yeah. who knows if he's going to Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean to make that sound bad, Eddie. I, I was agreeing with you. Sure. Like, there, there is um, – CD was a guy that I got to watch a lot in high school, being a Houston area guy. I went and saw, you know, plenty of his games. 
and was a guy that as a senior, you started to see him make some gains, but he was nowhere near as big as Elijah, especially in the lower body. Yeah. Um, now I don't know if the ball skills are the same, like, and that's something our guy at, uh, on three Cody Belair, he, he jumped on the corner and talked with some of our members about that. And, uh, but to not have quite CD Lamb's ball skills, that's no insult, man. Like that, that's, that's 99.9% of every receiver that's probably ever played the game. CD is a rare talent in that particular avenue. He just can make so many different plays with the ball and is so natural in how he takes it. So, um, I, again, I I think if you t- if you told me this guy in three or four years was an All-American, I, I don't think that's crazy. I think there is a lot of ceiling here because this is a guy that you, again, you have to remember, coming from a small school, Eastern Oklahoma, there is so much untapped potential. There's so much he's still learning and refining because there's no one at that level that can push him athletically. Once he starts getting really driven by, you know, the the guys, the Jacoby Johnsons and the Gentry Williams and all that stuff in practice, that's going to see, you're going to see him grow tremendously in a short amount of time. And what I think is so impressive is knowing what we know and then seeing him go to an event like this where there are multiple big time power five cornerbacks, uh, you know, on the the camp roster, he still shined. I mean, yeah. so I, again, I just think he is going to do nothing but get better and better as time goes on. Truly a standout from uh, the happenings over at Arlington Martin on Sunday. All right, let's move to the offensive line. I, th- I think that that was probably as a whole the strongest group. I know that, that was uh, one of the groups that we spent a lot of time with. We'll start with 2025 Melissa OU commit out of Melissa, Texas, Owen Hollenbeck. We have to start with the look. I mean, like, if that guy doesn't look like a Bill Biedenbow interior offensive lineman, no one on earth does. Like, the haircut, like, I, I again, if I didn't know Owen, he'd be a scary guy. Like, he he looks like a dude that, like, if you were walking down an alley, you wouldn't cross paths with him. Um, but he, I, I can look at that lower half. Like, I know it's a weird thing to talk about, but he's just so broad and those calves, like they look like they swallowed softballs. Like he, he is just so developed in really from top to bottom. I mean, you can tell the weight program they have there at Melissa, the work that they put into that. And he is a, a guy that. Physically, like if you saw him at camp and anybody tried to bull rush Owen, that that was a no go. You're not going to move him off the spot. He sets his butt down and it's over. But what we did see, and you can see it on that last clip, sometimes he can get beaten with quickness. I mean, he's got to get better about moving his feet and moving laterally and doing so with some of those things. But again, I think that can be learned. But the power, the hand strength, the way he strikes a defender. That stuff all looks really good to me. I mean, I, I again, so there are things he has to grow into, but I think there are raw tools there that are easy to like. Like, again, yeah, right here. I mean, you see it. Now, he does take a forearm to the face there. We know that's not going to work quite in a, in a real game when he's got a helmet on. But there are there were a few guys that you could tell. They, they'd work his outside shoulder. They'd work him with a pass rush move. And I, I saw it in games when I saw him last year, and you, you could see it a little bit. But again, that's not a knock on him. That's just something he's going to have to improve on. But I think there's athleticism there. I've seen you know the movement skills. I wonder a little bit if maybe the Oklahoma is going to work on him, changing his body up a little bit, maybe lean him out. He, he looks like a power lifter right now. You kind of wonder if, if time goes on, Jerry Schmidt focuses a little more on, you know, I don't know to simplify it and and make it really, really basic, kind of like cardio type work where he leans out a little bit. He loses some of that just mass, but at the same time, it allows him a little more flexibility of movement. One year younger, 2026 offensive tackle out of Prosper, uh, Prosper, Texas, Zayden Krimpen. Yeah, Zayden, uh, again, a guy that I saw a little bit of in a in a tough game for Prosper this year. It was the last game of their season against North Crowley. And I I came away impressed, but he wasn't really the focus of what I was watching. He was kind of secondary to a couple other guys. But watching him on Sunday, I, I really liked what I saw. I saw a kid that likes to compete. He can move his feet well. I think you can see it on that sometimes, you know, the coach will tall, you know, opening the gate. Like, he'll let people – kind of go where they want to go. And as he gets better and stronger with his inside hand, that's going to be harder to do. And again, that's something 
for people that don't go to camps, you have to understand sometimes when you see these guys get beat on inside moves, that stuff wouldn't work in a game. But see, here you can watch him. Like when he gets his feet under him, he sets that base, he starts moving, and he's just mirroring that defensive lineman. It looks good and it's natural, and he uses his hands well. And then, boy, he finishes. Even though you're not supposed to finish like that at a camp, I like that he did it. Um, but yeah, like I said, he has some stuff he needs to work on technically. But again, he's a 2026 guy. That's sure. just to be expected. So I, uh, again, I, I came away, his stock was up for me after the camp. Maybe somebody that I thought you, I, I don't want to speak for you, but I thought that you thought that the next guy maybe had the best day of uh, maybe all the offensive linemen sticking in the DFW area, John Turntine, 2026 offensive tackle out of North Crawley. Uh, he, so he played in that same Prosper game that sure. I saw Zayden sure. Griffin in. They, they, they were uh, head up. I mean, not, not going against each other, but, you know, ob- obviously opposing teams. And I came out of that game and I was like, wow, he's really good, but I think he's a guard. And like, you can, I mean, look at his lower body. That, that kid's a sophomore in high school and is just thick legged. And you would think like, oh, he can't move. So the kid he's going against this rep is Zane Rowe, who I know we're going to talk about later, who's a 2027 defensive end, who's probably going to be a top 100 guy in his class out of a Denton Geyer. And John just stoned him. Like, I mean, and probably better than any, I, we saw Fasusi go against that kid multiple times. We saw a bunch of, a, a bunch of really good offensive linemen. And I thought turn time easily had the best reps against him. Um, but look at, I mean, like, again, look at that lower half and look how easily he changes direction and mirrors with those defensive linemen. Uh, that's, that's not normal. And I thought, okay, he's going to be an elite guard, but seeing him in person, that guy can play left tackle all day. And I think probably on Sunday started to enter that conversation of like, this guy's a top two or three prospect in the state of Texas in 26. What about uh, Toa Katoa? Did I say that correctly? I I think it's Papunga Katoa. Okay. Well, I've covered Katoa. Good luck to me if he ends up at Oklahoma, but he had a pretty good day on Sunday. And a mountain of a dude. Like, I think he came in at like 6'3", 334 or some crazy. I mean, but again, a lot, guys, and and I hate to stereotype, but we see this with these poly guys where they are just these enormous human beings. You're like, no way can he move like he'll need to. And you watch him, man. He's, and again, another thing with these poly guys, man, they're, they're, it's a pass set. And he's like, no, nah, I'm not taking that step back. Like, if you if you give me a step, I'm going to push you off the ball. So he, again, still raw, another 2026 20, guy, very young. Um, and I know Oklahoma's been in on him early. That's another guy that Bill really likes uh, from everything I've gathered. But there is um, there's a lot of promise there. I mean, and to me, he is definitely a guard. But uh, – you can still see some weight he could take off, could change some things up, and he'll become even more athletic. But, I mean, he is a um, probably that that next DFW poly offensive lineman that's just going to have 50 offers before it's said and done. You might notice a theme here. you got to be like 6'5", 6'6", 6'7". I mean, we're talking about juniors in high school, Lake Ridge, uh, Mansfield, Texas, Lake Ridge High School, Felix Ojo. Yeah, uh, long. I mean, very. Uh, he is the perfect guy for you to highlight. I mean, you can see. Look at. I'm talking about, uh, compared to what we've just watched with Turntine and Katoa, and then look at his lower half. Like those legs. I mean, that that's that is a guy that if he can learn and he can set, he can kind of build out that frame. You're not going to beat that guy to the edge because it's just like you know trying to race a cheetah because he's every step he takes is two of yours. So uh, that is, he's a guy with a lot of natural potential. I like what I see. Obviously, Oklahoma offered him at Future Freaks. And uh, this is a guy that uh, I think Oklahoma is going to be glad they got in on early. And are, uh, again, I from everything I talked with him about, it sounded like Oklahoma went very well over the weekend. He's very happy with that visit. So, again, this is um, – this is an embodiment of what this offensive line group is because we haven't even gotten into the three guys we know everybody wants to hear about. And Felix Ojo, again, a guy with almost limitless potential. He just needs some time to grow into it. Well, let's start with one of the guys that people probably want to hear about, and that is Denton Ryan offensive tackle Ty Haywood, 2025 kid. 
Yeah, Ty, I thought along with John Turntine was probably the one of the two best offensive linemen I saw on the day. Uh, was rarely troubled. You love his frame. He's a good blend where he's not so lean that you say, oh, he's going to have to put on 60 pounds when he gets to college. But at the same time, he's not carrying a bunch of bad weight. So it, it all looks very comfortable for him. You look like he doesn't look like a guy that's going to struggle to put on weight. And at the same time, you're not going to have to work really hard to take off a bunch of bad, you know, too many cheeseburgers or whatever it may be. So uh, moves really naturally, has nice length. Um, I want to say somebody had told me his his wingspan was just off the charts. Like, I, I, you know, you can kind of see it there looking at him. He's very long armed and again, has some physicality to his game. So I, I went into the camp with him probably as my number two in this trio of Texas 2025 tackles we're going to talk about. I, I could absolutely buy the argument for him being number one. Mesquite Horn, offensive tackle, another 6'7", 300-plus uh, <laughs> offensive tackle in uh, Lamont Rogers. Yeah, Lamont, I would say, of the three, is probably the most raw. And we kind of knew that coming in, so that's not a huge surprise. But you talk about wingspan and length. I mean, Lamont Rogers is, uh, you know, just he's almost a pterodactyl with wings. Like, I mean, he, he's just unbelievable how he can get out to you on the Even if you have beaten him to the edge, he still has that length. And as he gets stronger and somebody does beat him with a move, he's going to have the strength and the length to kind of shove a hand in somebody's chest and reroute him and kind of move him around and do what he needs to do. So I, again, I like, um, I like what I saw from him in a lot of ways. Um, still, like I said, very raw and actually was a guy that took a visit to Oklahoma, you know, Monday, uh, yesterday. So uh, I've told that visit went well, we'll have more on that on the site for everybody that's kind of wanting to know what's going on with that. But um, yeah, a lot, a lot to like with Lamont Rogers. No, no big surprise. He didn't do anything to hurt his stock. No doubt about it. A, a really good offensive line group. That's obvious. I mean, with all the guys that we just discussed, let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Somebody that, uh, you know, it, it's probably not, uh, a state in Arkansas that, uh, has produced a lot of guys for Oklahoma. And you've talked about that right here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel you've talked about it on the unofficial Ford and you even wrote about it on soonerscoop.com but uh Marcus Wimberly somebody that uh you know has kind of jumped off the page I he reminds me a lot of uh Jaron Canick I think it, like there is a look about him in his face that uh makes me reminds me of at least of uh Jaron but a safety worked with some cornerbacks uh certainly a guy that him and Brett Vittables have a really good relationship yeah you can tell there's a real bond there with he Brent Venables and Brandon Hall and See, on, the, on this clip you're going to watch, you're watching Marcus Wimberly, who probably weighs 205, 210, trying to cover receivers out in space. Like That's that's not the life he's going to live at Oklahoma. So, you know, people that will see that say, oh, he got burned. That's not who he's going to play. Now, uh, you know, I, we had a chance to see, and I don't know what's on this reel, um, but we had a chance to see him play against some, you know, tight ends, some running backs. Looked much more at home there. That, that was, you know, they're running route trees that he's familiar with. It's just a little different deal. You know, we talked to him about it after the camp. Uh, yeah, this is going to be against the tight end here. So you're going to get to see a little bit better look where he's going to attack. Yeah. And then catches up because these guys just can't just run away from him with, you know, eight move routes, that kind of deal. So, uh, but, you know, he talked about um, just wanting to challenge himself. He played some corner, really liked that he did it, um, felt like it made him a little bit better. So, in the end, I, this is a guy that I, I really liked coming in. I love his junior tape at Box Site in Arkansas. And um, you're right. Like, there is a – there are certain guys you talk to and you're like, that's a Brent Venables guy. This is a Brent Venables guy. Like, no, he, no he makes all the sense in the world for Oklahoma. And uh, just not based on anything too overwhelming, but I, I definitely got an impression that Oklahoma is in a good spot for him right now. What can you tell us about Ryan Gilbert? I thought he had a really good day. We're going to see a, a limited amount of him, but in the mm -hmm. moments that we did see him, I thought he was really, really strong. Yeah, very natural cover corner. Like you see him watching there, and he's going to turn. He'll find it. No, he didn't. Okay, well, of course I, 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 I oversold there. I think but the no, next one, he Ryan does. Gilbert. Okay, okay. I think so. I knew we had a couple of clips, but yeah, I mean, like you're looking at him there, driving on the ball, getting in the. You know, he is, he is a guy that you can tell is really climbing up the rankings for a lot of these coaching staffs. I mean, rankings being a loose term, 
but they are, he's picked up a lot of offers. Again, this is a 2026 guy, little undersized, probably about 5'10, 5'11, you know, still growing, but not a, not a guy that can't physically handle. I mean, this, the kid he's going against their big physical receiver that was kind of bullying some people on the day. And Gilbert fought through it, made a play in the, you know, in the air. And I think that's kind of what you're getting. And it explains why Oklahoma made an offer the next day when he went up uh, on Monday along with Lamont Rogers, Legend Bay, and uh, Markel Ford to go check out Oklahoma. Again, just a really competitive kid. And that, that's kind of what stood out to me in watching him. A uh, school that uh, I think Oklahoma fans are probably pretty familiar with, Denton Geyer. Uh, I think he's uh, uh, Zane Rowe. 2027 athlete, uh, defensive lineman. He, he did a little bit of tight end stuff. We saw him a couple times, uh, I want to say two years or a year ago when we went down to Geyer to see him. Had a pretty good day, though. Yeah. Uh, people, keep in mind, this guy you're looking at here, 60. This is a 2027. This kid is finishing his freshman year of high school and is about 6'4 and 225. And I, again, was given guys like Michael Fasusi trouble, was given guys, you know, he fought John Turntine pretty well. Um, this is, this is, this is what a top 100 guy looks like as a freshman. That, that's kind of the way I would say this. And uh, Roe picked up an offer, another kid that picked up an offer at Future Freaks along with Felix Ojo. And um, he camped at OU last summer, really was impressive and a really good group of tight ends, coincidentally. Um, so there is, um, there, uh, there's just a lot that you're going to take home with Roe and say, okay, I don't know if he's a tight end. I don't know if he's a defensive end, but I, I, I want him on my roster. And that's the, I think that's the way Oklahoma's going to look at that and kind of let him, let his body kind of figure out what it's going to do. Cause again, he could be 255 by the time he's a high school senior. He's a big, big kid. Really? And good. that's, that's him and Fasusi. They got yeah. into it. They were, they were kind of jawing the whole time. Eddie, what would you say? I bet you they took five, six reps against each other. They were they were enjoying kind of calling each other out and going head to head. Yeah, I think Zane Rowe wanted a little bit more of Michael Fasusi there at the end, and they ended up uh, kind of calling it a day, sending each uh, mm -hmm. each guy to their own way. But the quarterback position, uh, I thought was really good. I, I find the quarterback thing in the state of Oklahoma, particularly interesting. Two of the guys that were down there are part of that group in Jamarian Ficklin and Grady Adamson. The uh, Jamarian Ficklin, obviously out of Muskogee high school, won a state championship a year ago in uh, Grady Adamson, a kind of a mainstay here in the central part of Oklahoma, having started at Deer Creek for the last two years. If I was a theatric person, Eddie, I need a box to stand on. And try to get somebody to explain me explain to me why these two aren't getting a lot more attention. Sure. Grady Adamson's a kid that I've been high on since he was a freshman. I've loved him at Deer Creek. Has really helped elevate that program. You know, kind of kind of Jake Sexton. You know, they had that great senior year, and then Grady's helped build on that. I think they've been to the state semis the last two years, last I guess three years if you include Jake's senior year. So really nice job by Wade Stanley and those guys at Deer Creek. But there is um also, like I said, Grady's just a delivers such a nice ball, a lot of velocity, and his body has changed so much in the last year. He's really filled out. Um, and then, you know, you look at Jamarian Ficklin, same deal. Why the Big 12 isn't throwing offers at his door, I'll never understand. I, I, I feel like that's a kid Oklahoma State should be all over, Iowa State, Kansas State, all these schools that we know recruit Oklahoma all the time. They should be all over these guys because – Whatever you think of Kevin Sperry, you know, Oklahoma's current commitment that everybody kind of has as the consensus top quarterback in the state, the gap between he, Ficklin, and Adamson is not nearly as big as people think it is. Those are those are two guys that if Oklahoma signed them, I would say, okay, that, that's gonna they're gonna be okay. We'll see what happens. I'm not saying those guys are gonna be superstars, but Oklahoma could do a lot worse than signing those two. So places that don't recruit at Oklahoma's level should be all over those two guys. Another player that uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, the union kid, Casey Delgado, here in a second. Uh, Legend Bay, it was the first time that I was able to see him uh, in person. I, Josh, I believe that you have seen him uh, before, but uh, what did you think about his day? Well, you know, you have to just get past the fact that he's not huge. I mean, he's probably 5'9". I mean, like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, yeah. he is a small guy. And it kind of reminds me, and I hate to make the comparison because it's a lot to put on base, but physically, you're like, that looks like what Kyler Murray looked like in high school. Now, 
I'm not telling you he throws the ball like that. I'm not making the comparison even as a runner. <laughs> but anybody that's watched his tape, Legend Bay is special when he's running with the football. And I think he's a better passer than people give him credit for. I, I was fairly impressed with what I saw on Sunday. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, on Sunday. Uh, and um, there is uh, th- there's just kind of a confidence to him. Like you can watch him just throwing. Like he looks very calm at all times, always under control. Now there's some stuff you can see there where he's kind of dropping off with his left foot. He's not driving toward the ball, that kind of stuff. Like, And again, people that are that know a little bit, you know, including myself, are going to point out stuff like that. But that's stuff that can be fixed. I, I'm not overly worried about that. And um, again, he's an interesting guy. And kind of like you and George and I talked about last week, he's very indicative. We're learning that Seth Luttrell wants a quarterback with some athleticism, and Legend Bay has it in spades. No doubt about it. Uh, Third guy that was from Oklahoma, Kaysen Delgado. We just mentioned him. He's a youngster. He's a pup. But it looks like Tulsa Union is going to be okay at the quarterback position moving forward. Yeah, you know, Shaker Rising goes out with injury. This kid comes on. No, you know, I won't claim that I knew who he was before he came on. You know, I'd heard the name a little bit, but I, I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to see what this kid does. But watching him at camp, again, for a young guy that was there with a lot of older quarterbacks, a lot of guys with power five offers, you know, we talked about Adams and Ficklin, all that, that sort of stuff. He looked comfortable. He didn't look out of out of place. Um, you know, his arm is still developing, which is completely understandable for a freshman in high school. But I, I like the mechanics. I like that, you know, he looked very repeatable. That's something I talk about a lot. I don't care if your mechanics are Dan Marino or a perfect textbook or anything, but can you do it over and over and over again? And I, I find those guys are the ones that, that really have success with consistent accuracy, and I think he's got a chance to be one of those kind of guys. A couple wide receivers and running backs to get to. Brock Boyd, South Lake Carroll, uh, you know, Jacob Jordan already at the, uh, the in, within the Oklahoma football program and even making some waves uh, through the winter. We'll see what happens during the spring. But uh, Brock Boyd, obviously one of the best programs in the state of Texas and the South Lake Carroll uh, Dragons. Uh, I thought he had a pretty good day on Sunday. It will surprise no one. And again, especially like you mentioned, the buzz around Jacob Jordan really starting off well as a as a preferred walk on for Oklahoma. South Lake Carroll just produces kids like this as far as just technicians. He knows exactly what he's doing. He knows what he's trying to accomplish. He goes into, you know, one-on-one matchups with a plan. Like the, it's all very clear to him. And the difference with with um with Brock Boyd is he just got a little more size, a little more speed than a guy like Jacob Jordan. But, you know, there is um Again, you look at the body type, you like look at him fight against some of these routes. Now, he had a tough day. He he got some bad quarterback draws. He'd run some great routes where the ball just hit him in the feet or was too low. But again, look at like him. He's setting that corner up. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's trying to get that corner to accomplish. And the second that corner, yeah, he takes that step and it's over. And, and that is, um, that's what you get with these Carroll guys. They just have a really good understanding of what they're trying to do. And they go in with a plan. And again, that that is going to continue to show up because he's the kind of kid who just keeps working and improving and refining little elements of his game. As successful as the South Lake Carroll program is in the state of Texas, I think the same could be said for the Jinx program in the state of Oklahoma. A familiar name to Oklahoma football fans, Caden Jones, the 2026 running back slash. I know there's some people that want to say slash quarterback. Uh, I thought he looked physically just excellent from uh, what we've seen him kind of grow up as. And, uh, you know, obviously the son of Kiwan Jones, pretty good day for him as well. Yeah, good to see you acknowledging your your Cubs uh, mafia hat tip there uh, to the defensive-minded uh, jinx people there. Absolutely. But, um, <laughs> no, but yeah, Caden Jones looked great. I mean, he, he really is starting to fill out that frame. And again, I, I've talked about it before. People have an idea with him being Kiwan's son of what he's going to look like, but you can look at him. He he and Kiwan have nothing in common with the way they're put together as running backs, but Caden's got those same quick feet. He changes directions really naturally and it, he sinks. He's a guy that runs low, kind of stays behind his pads. He's not going to provide even for kind of a taller back. He's not going to provide you with all this surface area to hit. And uh, again, there is, um, there's a lot of ball skills in his game. It's why people at jinx like him as a corner, um, but again, this is a multifaceted guy. One of the favorites in the 2026 class to be the number one guy in the state. 
And it, it showed, I mean, he, he did nothing to change the idea that he is one of the state's top prospects, really regardless of class. No doubt. Uh, what are the guys that uh, I maybe probably Oklahoma, just high school football fans aren't as familiar with, but I would be sure to say that, uh, or I, I think I would be pretty confident in saying they will know about him in the next, in the coming years. It was somebody that we, uh, learned about at the OU football camp, or at least I learned about, I think you knew about him uh, prior, but Mason James, who already holds a uh, Oklahoma offer and goes to school just down the street from the University of Oklahoma at Norman North High School. Mason is a guy that he kind of plays like he, like he is. Mason's just cool. He's always calm. He's very under control. Like, and, and he plays like that. Like you can see, I mean, now... <laughs> He was a guy that a coach kind of called out like he was weaving, he was dodging too much. Yeah. And again, that's just people, guys, you get used to watching these NFL combines where these guys have been working on that drill for months and months and months. They know exactly how they're supposed to run it. Those guys, they don't, he'd never done that before in his life. I'd be willing to bet money. So, but again, you just watch him. And as I'm talking about how smooth he is, of course, he has a little stumble out of his break there. But this is, this is what I like about him. He's just so it all looks very easy for him and he never looks out of control. And he really, like I said, I think he's a guy that you could do some different stuff with. Like if you want to do some jet sweep with him, I think he's got the quickness to do that. He's a very elusive guy in open space and not the biggest guy, but he's physical. Like a few corners tried to, you know, kind of bully him up a little bit and he, he didn't have any problem with that. So again, I, I liked, um, probably my longest look of really just getting to watch him because it was kind of a wide receiver DB group where we only had like four or five guys to really zero in on. Sure. So I really got to watch him on just about every rep. And I felt like I got a really good feel for kind of where he's at for Norman North. Last but not least, Ryland Morris, another running back that holds an Oklahoma offer out of the 2026 class. Yeah, this guy, uh, another, you know, C4 guy there in, uh, you know, North Texas, Southern Oklahoma, and uh, a lot of speed. I mean, just a lot of easy burst. Um, and you, you can watch him on any time he would get in space against some of these linebackers. Uh, here, For those watching, this is a manual choice we're looking at right now, big wide receiver. Um, but yeah, Rylan Morris is a, um, a guy that probably 5'8", 170, kind of an all-purpose back type of guy. But, you know, you find ways to get the hit the ball in his hands and he's got that big playability and very dangerous when he starts changing directions out in space. Hand up. That was my fault on the video. I think I mislabeled <laughs> him. We'll get you back with the, uh, the Ryland Morris stuff, but I thought he did have a pretty good day with that running back group. The, the, my biggest gripe about these camps is we got to go when they're doing one-on-ones with the run, with the running backs and the linebackers, we got to go talk to the offensive linemen. You don't get enough tape of all these guys. That's yeah, neither oh, yeah. here nor that, there. That, I, I can attest to the Sooner Scoop videographer not being at fault there. That that was um, that is challenging because, like I said, and Eddie can Eddie can attest that I would have interviewed about four more offensive linemen if we would have you know had no no other concerns. But there was, like we said at the top, there was a lot to get through, and you kind of had to make some decisions of interview this guy or make sure we have some b-roll for all the stuff we're going to do through the spring and summer with some of these guys no doubt uh just kind of wrapping it all up i know that we've hit on a lot of these guys uh, it seemed like that was one of the better camps that the uh the under armor folks will have uh the dfw area combined with oklahoma and kind of the surrounding areas arkansas wherever uh it was just a really really strong camp and particularly some of these offensive line guys oh yeah i mean it, it was it's exactly what you'd expect with us talking for months and months and months about how great this offensive line class is. And what I think Oklahoma fans can be most excited about is clearly it's not just 2025. I mean, John Turntine, Felix Ojo, uh, the Katoa kid, you know, like you go down the list, there is a bunch of good 2026 offensive linemen for Oklahoma to zero in on as well. And that's just like we talk about now with the defensive line, from last year and how you build that depth. Same goes for the offensive line. You got to keep cycling those guys in and bringing them in. And to have that kind of, you know, talent that is starting to emerge just south of you. I mean, cause we didn't even talk about Connor Cardi and some of the other guys that Oklahoma that were there at the camp and that we saw and liked, but we again, kind of like with interviews, we got to make some choices here. We got to pick some of our guys 
And um, there is, there's a lot more talent coming through. I think you're starting to see the fruits of some of these offensive line trainers that are in the Dallas area, some of which are connected to Oklahoma. You know, Brandon Braxton did a lot of training in Dallas for a while. You're starting to see the fruits of that where some of these young offensive linemen are a little ahead of where we used to see. No doubt about it. Josh, we appreciate it. That was a really good camp and a really good breakdown of everything that uh, kind of caught our attention. I know that we'll probably hit on a lot more of that on the Unofficial 40 on the podcast this week and uh, right back here on the Suterscoop.com YouTube page. So really good time to join Suterscoop. I know that we didn't hit it at the top $1 promo for uh, you know a month, which uh, as much as going on with the basketball side of things, the Diamond Sports, Bob's already headed over to softball. Uh, on Tuesday night, Tarleton State. I'm headed over to baseball for uh, Bedlam Baseball. It's uh, it's a really good time. And oh, by the way, oh, you started spring football on Monday. We're hoping to talk to some of those guys next week. So, Josh, we appreciate it. We will uh, talk to you uh, out there next time right here on the Suterscoop.com YouTube page.